As an elected leader, I'm all too aware of government's limitations when it comes to fixing things that are spiritual in nature. That's where prayer comes in, and we need it more than ever. With the economy in trouble, communities in crisis, and people adrift in a sea of moral relativism, we need God's help. That's why I'm calling on Americans to pray and fast like Jesus did, and as God called the Israelites to do in the book of Joel. And of course, as Texas Governor Rick Perry inviting America to join him in solving things like the economy at his prayer event at Reliance Stadium in Houston this past weekend. The event hosted in conjunction with a number of leaders of a religious and political movement who see themselves as the second group of humans picked to be Jesus's apostles after the ones you might be more familiar with from the Bible. The new apostolic reformation has embraced Rick Perry as part of their own goal to, frankly, take over government in order to clear the way for the rapture, the end of the world. They and their connection to Rick Perry's presidential aspirations are the subject of Texas Monthly's cover story this month. The author of that piece is Forrest Wilder. He's staff writer for the Texas Observer, and he joins us tonight for the interview. Forrest Wilder, thanks very much for making time for us. I really appreciate it. Great to be here. What is the relationship between this uh, new apostolic reformation movement that you've been writing about and what everybody else in national politics uh, describes as Rick Perry's uh, religious right base? Well, Rick Perry, um, in putting on the response, selected a very particular group of people um, to help him organize it, uh, to promote it, to endorse it. Um, And this uh, group of people known as the New Apostolic Reformation Movement, um, as you discussed, um, and they're really kind of at the outer periphery or sort of, you know, bleeding edge of of American um, uh, Christianity. And so it's interesting that, that he picked them. I mean, he could have gone more moderate. He could have put on a, uh, an event that maybe had, you know, Joel Osteen's more moderate evangelicals. But the fact that he picked the, the apostles and prophets crowd, as well as some Christian Zionists and others kind of um, in the margins, uh, I think says a lot about, um, one, his political strategy as he goes into the presidential primary, but also maybe a little bit about where he's coming from as a, as a person and as a politician. I, my general... My general feeling about faith and politics is that nobody's theology is of political interest unless they are trying to legislate faith. And there's two different parts of that. If their faith and the way they practice their faith leads them to have interests or want to pursue specific policies, that's of interest. But also if their faith is actually using their candidacy in order to accomplish theological goals. I think of the New Apostolic Reformation movement from your writing and from others as a political movement, as a goal that ha- as a group that has political goals. Do you do you see it that way and what are their political goals? Absolutely. Um, and in fact, I mean at the response a, a, a lot of the coverage of it said that it was essentially apolitical. Um, in fact, when they're talking about um, revival, which was a major theme of the response, they're not just talking about a spiritual revival. They're also talking about a political revival. And just as one kind of small example, there was an anti-abortion prayer uh, that was read several times at the response and was kind of then also sung in the form of a, of a song, which ended uh, God... Um, end abortion and send revival um, to America. It, it is not that there's a 12-point agenda that they've, they've hammered out or anything like that. It's just that the basis, um, the uh, theological uh, basis for the New Apostolic Reformation movement is, as you pointed out, about taking control of the seven mountains, government, media, family, arts, entertainment, so on and so forth. Um, a particular group of Christians taking control of the seven mountains in order to bring about um, godly government and the eventual return of of Jesus. And so these things are, are the political and the spiritual religious aspects are totally tied up uh, with each other and really can't be totally uh, disentangled. It is clear um, that these folks seem to be politically ambitious, even if it is for theological reasons. It does seem clear that they have also picked Rick Perry by allying themselves like this with them. Uh, But is it clear that Rick Perry has chosen them back, uh, that he embraces their worldview in important ways, that he would see becoming president as something that had theological consequences? You know, I don't know if we know entirely what his relationship is with them, um, to what extent he may share their beliefs. Um, 
But the fact, again, that he uh, picked them um, to organize this event says at least that he's comfortable with them being on a stage with him. I mean, he very literally elevated this set of individuals and organizations and, and this movement to the national stage. Um, and um, he, you know, surely he's a savvy politician. He knew the significance of that for himself going into this campaign, but also for the folks that are involved in this movement and the leadership who believe that there may actually be prophecies that they as prophets and apostles have received from God that talk about Texas's role in this spiritual and political revival and the role that Perry may uh, play as a literal instrument um, instrument of God. Um, you know, and there was a moment at the response right before he gave his speech, uh, in which he embraced a woman named Alice Patterson. Uh, and this is an apostle, a figure who believes, for example, the Democratic Party is um, controlled by Jezebel. Um, so does Rick Perry believe the Democratic Party is controlled by Jezebel? You know, I don't know, but um, it's certainly something that is interesting to explore a little bit further. I will call him and I will ask him. And you will be the 40,000th person to know if I get an answer from him. Uh, Forrest Wilder, uh, staff Excellent. writer for the Texas Observer, thank you for your reporting and thanks for joining us to talk about it tonight. I really appreciate it. Thank you.